Mike's on. How you been doing? <laughs> okay, Council Member Schneider, I know she's here. Yeah, let me go ahead and, um, they're not in the pack. They're supposed to be, oh, they're not in the pack. Yet. All right. Okay. We'll start with, uh, uh, roll call with no roll call with city council, please. All city, city council members are present. Planning commissioners all all present, with the exception exception of Chair Jean Joe. She's excused. Perfect. Uh, I'd like to do the pledge of allegiance. Everybody, please stand. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome everybody to our special joint meeting with the Millbury City Council and our Planning Commission. Um, is there any public communications at this time? Okay, so I'm going to go right to existing business, and that is the downtown enhancements. Uh, do we have a staff report, please? Hmm? Oh, this is just photocopies I have from the internet. Mayor and council members and planning commissioners, I'm Deborah Nelson. I'm a contract planner with the city. And tonight we are asking of the city council um, that hold by. It closer, Pardon me. Thank there you. you. Um, we are asking the city council to receive a presentation from staff and the city council subcommittee on downtown enhancements. And that subcommittee is council member Pappen and mayor Oliva. And following that presentation for the council to approve the subcommittee's choices for design of downtown enhancements and authorize the city manager to proceed to implement them in accordance with the city's applicable regulations and procedures. Um, this is the fourth time the council and um, second time the planning commission has looked at this plan. The first was uh, also in, in uh, a meeting on the general plan. Um, since that time, the council has looked at it twice. Um, and it was taken before a joint meeting of the tourism committee the Millbrae Business Advisory Committee and the Community Preservation Commission and the Council Subcommittee attended that meeting and we reviewed some of the proposals. Uh, also in June, the Council adopted a $300,000 line item in the CIP to proceed with some interim measures for the downtown enhancements. And the focus is at the Hillcrest Boulevard Broadway um, intersection and it consists of four parts. There will be um, some new benches and new planters and new landscaping in the existing palm tree wells at that four corners. There will be a, um, a new light fixture at the four corners, which is taller. So it provides both intersection lighting and pedestrian lighting and can receive banners. Uh, it could receive uh, cross the intersection, festoon lighting, which are like you may have in your backyard to light up your backyard in a, in a colorful way. Um, and it will also include, the red area shown on this plan is a treatment called thermoplast, where we um, would look at the city's logo um, in a paint product applied to the existing intersection. So, we're also working with downtown property owners. We have a, a relationship with not the developer of Nine Hillcrest Boulevard, and we're looking at a parklet in a parking space next to that facility. There's some other business owners uh, at that intersection ha who have shown some interest in participating. Um, so we're we're really wanting to move ahead. Staff has uh, begun the research and actually some purchasing of. Uh, trash cans and cigarette receptacles. And um, so tonight's recommendation is for you to authorize us uh, to proceed by this motion we've asked you to take. That concludes my report. Um, Michael, maybe you could go through some of the other slides which show 
for, we're also, I should mention, sorry, that you may have noticed, the audience and the members here may have noticed that we've put notices on all of the news racks in the downtown area on, and on El Camino. That is in the district we call the downtown improvement area. We're trying to do an assessment of how many of those news racks are now utilized by the print media versus when they were first installed. And are they in the right location? When we've already um, heard feedback from folks that there's some new locations we'd like to identify. And we've also um, heard from some providers that there's some locations they're no longer using. Um, we do look to install, remove the one that's in front of PAPES, which has 12 to 18 news racks in it, and install one new uh, in the center image on the bottom, uh, the green news racks, and then that um, gray image that looks like trees is what we call a corral. It would wrap the news racks. Our intent would be to put no more than two stacked, three wide, or six total news racks in any one location. And this is to make more room for pedestrians, also provide for all the print media that we need to have, uh, and reduce the clutter. Um, so that, now that concludes my presentation, and if the subcommittee would like to add to that, that'd be great. Gina? Um. Uh, thank you, Deborah. Uh, we have had a lot of feedback from the public, and it is greatly appreciated along these lines. Some people were really concerned, are we getting rid of all the news racks? No, as Deborah explained, we are trying to just reduce the clutter that exists presently because there's too much going on there. So we're, the subcommittee is very excited about all of this, and hopefully we can move forward. We had also talked about... Uh, some talking to some of the property owners with this started with operation clean sweep which was a lot of fun and we got a very positive response on uh, but we are looking to to talk to some of the property owners there are two big bare walls uh, that some of the property owners across from like wells fargo and also the pape parking lot so if you've seen something like at stanford mall where they paint in what looks like almost a a neighborhood with flower boxes and things like that so we're hopeful that they will work with us to make that also a part of making our downtown look better so I just might add because I think everything's pretty covered and thank you staff for the incredible style that you bring to the whole enhancement um, it was really fun to participate in in um, showing that showing the whole program to the the different committees um, that was uh, probably the most valuable um, piece that we had from from the committee members themselves. Um, I do want to say that this is work in progress. So, with regards to, I'm going to say it again, as Gina did, the clean sweep. The council member Pappen says the clean sweep was yes. We had to show our part in cleaning up. It's. I have to tell you that I still get the comments from people. I've seen the dro the brooms at work, which is really always fun to see, and. Um, with that, with this little enhancement that we're doing, the trial at the corner, um, I don't want to end it at this. This is not going to be the enhancement. It is the test to the enhancement because we do need the property owners to buy into this. The bid, the business um, development is got to come forward and we need to get engaged with our property owners and with our businesses to be a team with this. So um, I'm really excited, and I thank you very much for all your hard work. You, Madam Mayor, if I might, you reminded me that it's, it's also in the budget, which is attachment B, within the $300,000. Um, building on your cl clean sweep, we are proposing at least a nine-month month test of bringing back more street sweeping and um, garbage collection and cleanup. So Including that, some um, water uh, power washing. Power washing with recycled water. Um, and so that cost is represented all within the budget that you approved. Recycled and water. Recycled water. Yes. Is that, Thank that's you. not what I said? Yes. <laughs> Anybody else? Just, just a quick question on that. Um, it's listed in the budget as a monthly maintenance fee but it also says that it will be done approximately twice a year, the power washing. 
Um, so are there other services that will be done that are covered by that $27,000 yes. dollar amount? Yes, our city staff does clean up in the morning. And so we would be talking to another provider about uh, trash disposal in the afternoons because we do notice after lunch in the downtown that there's much more litter um, and also on weekends. So the, the, the cost is an estimate right now. We don't have a contract with anybody, but um, to have those extra days and extra hours and the street cleaning and the sidewalk cleaning, that's our estimate for total for nine months for the rest of the year. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Schneider. Am I on? Okay. Um, thank you, staff, for this. I do not support this activity. Um, first of all, we're going through the general plan that we're talking about tonight, and we're going to be going through a design charrette. For the audience, a design charrette means that you bring all these concepts to a location, and people get to look at these ideas and get to see them. And I would rather that we postpone this activity. I'm not opposed to it, but I'm opposed to spending the money now in front of a design charrette. Because you're going out and you're choosing the style of the benches, you're choosing the style of the ashtrays, which is a whole other subject, um, before the design charrette. And I just think in light of the fire at the community center, with the unknown of what the insurance is going to be, and these costs that the city is going to uh, need to cover for the rebuild of that, that going forward at this time is not the right decision. But I have a couple of questions. Um, I work in the solid waste field. Typically, in a commercial district, garbage is picked up between 4 or 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning. It's typically done prior to business so that the big trucks can get in there and nobody gets hurt. So did, you can, did, did we work with our own staff um, in Public Works, I imagine, that handles our contracts for garbage. Did we work with them in the placement of these new containers? I just want to know that staff is being included in the process because after reading this, I get a feeling that we're not all talking to each other. The second issue on smoking, I was um, vocal on this in the July meeting, that to me, if you put an ashtray out next to a bench, you are saying it is perfectly legal to smoke at this bench. My mother has COPD. If she's around smoke, it'll trigger an asthma attack, and a good 50% of the time we end up in the hospital with pneumonia. If there are anybody else out there with breathing issues, it is problem to be around smokers. And I would think that the non-smokers have as much of a right to be downtown. We don't go downtown because of the smoke. So when we put ashtrays out there, you are asking for smoking. On top of that, I know Councilman Wayne and I tried to get an, a full-time enforcement person to try to work on the cleanliness down there. But the council at that time decided to wait on hiring of an enforcement person. So you can't, you can't put an ashtray out there, tell people not to smoke, and not expect things to happen. So I think we're just kind of going out this the wrong way. Our solid waste staff should be involved. On top of this, we have an, a huge amount of illegal dumping from Tenants in the downtown area, they're not providing enough garbage. If you go in back of the alleys, you see nothing but garbage overflow. The wind picks it up. Um, I think there's a different approach to this, and I think it's all part of the general plan, and it's all part of the plan development area. So I, I won't be voting for this. Okay, I just want to make it perfectly clear what we are voting for. We, we have already voted. And I did not realize so, that I was voting to waste three hundred thousand dollars on something prior to a design charade. Excuse me, Council Member The council action tonight will be the following presentation from the following the presentation from staff and the city council subcommittee. The city council approved the subcommittee's choice for design of the downtown enhancements and authorize the city manager to proceed to implement them in accordance with the city's applicable regulations and procedures. So in other words, what we don't want to do is have to come, if I could, if, if I could explain it, we don't want to have to have staff come to say what kind of bike rack that this professional has decided to choose. She would probably bring it towards the subcommittee with our approval, go forward and purchase. So that's what we're voting on tonight. Okay, we've been cautioned. Sorry, we don't want to overload. Uh, thank you very much again, Madam Mayor, for setting the record straight here. And we will note that 
a lot of the designs were presented during the general plan meeting and we've gotten a lot of feedback from the committees moving forward here and the general plan will take a couple of years in the making and we have had demands from the public to act as quickly as possible in this test project we believe is a wonderful movement in that direction and as we can see from the owners of the Walgreens and all of the wonderful enhancements they have made recently we're hoping to build on that and really make this a reality sooner rather than later and we have worked with the waste management and appreciate all of that so I think a lot of the public has been very excited about this and we hope that we can proceed uh, quickly because a lot of times people wonder what are you doing and to finally see some results I think this would be a wonderful project so I will be voting for it thank you comment okay so we have a bicycle and pedestrian subcommittee underneath park and recreation and I would think that they might look at the various types of bicycle stands and find things that actually work for the variety of bicycle uses. I'm really happy to hear that you're considering murals on two walls, but since our Cultural Arts Committee doesn't have quorum, our Cultural Arts Committee has three people out of a quorum, but because there aren't other members, they cannot meet. I'm the liaison to that committee. I can't meet with them because of Brown Act violations. I'm sure our Cultural Arts Committee would love to be involved in helping to bring arts downtown, but we don't have a structure in place or we don't have enough members in place that they can even meet and discuss it. So it would be nice, again, to get our public involved in these decisions instead of it seeming to be coming as part of a budget discussion. Uh, it should have, I wasn't at the April meeting, I wouldn't have said go for it with the design charrette discussed at the March meeting. So uh, I'll be the one, no vote, I'm okay with that. But um, I just think that we need to start using the structure of our committees and commissions and not be making decisions before it's even brought to them. And I, I think everybody would agree. In fact, we do have some of the members here that were part of this decision making, so they were awesome. It was great because we needed that support. And, we'll be, and we will be working with them moving forward too. So we're really excited about this and thank you to the Community Preservation Committee and everybody who's been a business part of advisory. it. The Business Advisory Committee. Again, this is a small part. We are excited about moving forward. I'd like to move for, call for the question and move in support of this. I'm making the motion to approve. All right. Uh, any public comment? I'll comment from the council member. Oh, oh I'm sorry. sorry. I didn't see your hand. I had the sun in my face. I had the sun in my face. There, the sun's down. Now. Go ahead. I see you on my oh, right. I see. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I, I think that um, we've been trying to get downtown uh, improved for a while, and um, I think we we tried this like 15 years ago. We put in palm trees, we put in those planters, um, and we spent a lot of money. And that money is not what you call city money, it's taxpayers' money. My money, your money, property taxpayers' money. Um, I'm for demonstrating what can be happen and try to induce downtown business owners and property owners to, to uh, improve to downtown, but I'm not in favor of just throwing money away just for the sake of throwing, just throwing something at it. So I would like to encourage um, that, and I'd like to go on record to say that if we do this, I would like this to also uh, be just the start of getting a BID, which is a business improvement district there, and get the part property owners and business owners to buy in, put some skin into the game. And I'm not, I don't really approve of us cleaning their property for them. I don't want to clean their sidewalks for them. Because what happens is they said, oh, you know what, we'll just wait till every, all the citizens complain. So every 10 years, the city council will be pressured to clean the sidewalks for us and we don't have to pay for anything. Every 10 years, we'll just wait till they get really mad, the citizens get really mad about the, the, uh, the quality of the sto stores, quality of shops, and the city has to throw money at it. The city means us property tax owners, have to, us property pay, uh, tax payers have to throw money to improve somebody else's pro um, property. Does anybody see anything wrong with that? Okay, so 
I want to make sure that if this project, and I think this is a great demonstration project of what can happen, but I'm not in favor of spending any more money downtown unless they put downtown puts skin into the game. In other words, let's get a couple of blocks and say, hey, we will, give you, we will match grants or whatever it takes to get you, property owners and, and business owners, to improve your property. Because we need more diversity in our downtown in shopping. We need some shopping down there. We just saw the report, and we're going to talk about it tonight. 90% of the money that we earn as Millbrae people, we spend elsewhere. That's in the report. So how are we going to capture that back? We need some good shopping downtown. The only way we're going to do that is if the property owners and the business owners step up. And they cannot rely on the city to do it for them because they have no skin in the game. So that's, that's well you. said. <clears throat> what about the public? Oh, yeah. And so for public? the public, too, we're going to get right to you, too. Part of this process has also included educating the business owners. So we are mailing out the current restrictions. We are in the process of developing a littering ordinance. So we're moving in the right direction here about bringing everyone together. And we do agree with Council Member Lee that there needs to be responsibility there. This is a first step, and we hope that it will continue in that direction. Any public comments? So I will agree. No, oh, sorry. No, Deb, go ahead. So I just have a quick question. Sure. So to tag on what you Councilman mean? Lee said earlier, uh, I'm a fan of us doing some work in the downtown. I'm a fan of the project and us beautifying things. But what I'm not a fan of is us not having an end game here that makes sense. Because what I don't understand is why we're not going to the businesses now and working a deal now, whether or why we're not have to spend 300000 up front and then ask them, hey, you like what we did? Let's do more together. It would seem to me a good rational step would be to go to take this plan, go to the property owners and say, do we, can we work on this together and get some joint buy-in? I don't understand why there isn't a plan here to get them up front without us spending the money up front. Mm -hmm. Do you want to answer? Uh, yeah. Uh, we have reached out to the business community, and the response has been great. So, well, with that, some, that well, we don't have anything. We don't have anything proper into place. I think, Robert, what yeah. you're talking about is what a BID, a business improvement development right. area, and the way that um, our subcommittee and our staff um, and direction, because we do have the funds to to do that, initiate it was number one, clean it up, show that we need to clean. So we initiated that Operation Clean Sweep. Number two, develop it. That's where we're at this stage of it. And number three, engage everybody. So that'll be the third step of it. And this, by, by any means, does this enhance the entire downtown. This is a small portion of it. And the, it's a, te would we call it a test ground or a, a, a test. It's a test to see because, you know, we will get, we're going to get critiquing. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. We're going to take it for whatever the committees direct us to do from there. But you're absolutely right. And I think that what you've heard from at least three of the five, four of the five, sorry, the, the BID is definitely the next step in this direction. Most importantly, we need skin. I've heard that saying once or twice, skin in the game. And to follow up with that, too, the response from the business community has been like Pete's. You know, we will, you know, talk to our corporate. We'll help pay for additional uh, the trash cans you've seen here. So there's some consistency throughout the uh, smoking towers so that away from the front entrances so that the access there. We're try they've been really eager to work with us. The owner of the 7-Eleven didn't even say. know she could um, power wash. We, we handed her a broom, and she literally says, I'm so excited. I'm going to paint the side. Can you help me with this or that? So just engaging I, the engagement of walking down and talking. I think there's six or seven people in this room that actually helped give out those brooms. And the engagement was amazing. The feedback was anything more than I ever would have anticipated. Council Member Lee. Thank you for, for those comments. So the next step, as, um, as Mr. Cote uh, mentioned, is to, is to let's make sure that we have a program for the Nexus to get uh, the BID going, the Business Improvement District, to be organized. So as part of the budget, as part of this budget, I'd like to see us uh, spend a little bit of money on getting, some, uh, uh, getting somebody to help us organize the, the downtown business people. 
I think that was all part of the plan already. Okay, thank you. It's and other, one other clarification. Report. When we do street cleaning, do we do the whole, um, all the street, or do we just do the city-owned um, portions? We do the city's right-of-way. We do not do Millbrae Square. That's in private ownership. They do their own cleanup and more frequently than we do. So we're looking to kind of match that same uh, level of cleaning. Okay, because I, I kind of don't want to do that because I don't. I just want to do the city part. I don't want to be cleaning other people's sidewalk for them. I think if they want to clean their sidewalk, they ought to do it, and they should do it on their own. And they shouldn't be asking the city to pay for it because they're always asking this, us taxpayers to pay to clean their property when they should be taking care of their own property. There's some of the owners like uh, Peter's at 16 Mile House. He cleans his own property. A lot of other people do, but just a few people say, "Hey, why don't we just let the city take care of it?" You know, they're going to get mad. In 10 years, they're going to call the city council. City council comes and, okay, we're going to go clean the sidewalks for them because our city, citizens are mad. So they're just taking us for suckers. I think it's, I think Deborah was pretty clear that we're going to clean the city portion. No, she wasn't clear. Well, isn't that? Well, the, the sidewalks are city right of way. Our city ordinances say a property owner, even residential property owners, are responsible for the sidewalk and the landscape in front of their house. Uh, it's not uncommon for downtowns to, to have more city participation in this kind of uh, activity than, say, it is in residential because you have um, the business owners, there's varying levels of whether or not they're going to clean the sidewalk. And really what you want to do for the cash registers to ring, I've used that before, is for your whole downtown to look appealing for people to come. So the intent of this test, and it will be coordinated with the design charrette for the general plan. When the uh, consulting team came in the spring and did the walk, we, that we looked at what the redevelopment agency had implemented many years ago. We've since lost the um, storefront improvement program. There's a noticeable difference, I think, by the whole community of what happened once there was not funding to help the businesses do their own improvements. Storefront improvement program was a collaboration between the business community and the city. So the intent of the BID is to get to that point again, and the recommendation of the staff and the subcommittee is show how that could be accomplished before you go to them with a plan that it, it's harder to look at a plan than it is to look at actual improvements. Thank you. Mayor, if I can have clarification. I just wanted, there was a, that lady in the back had her hand up forever. Yes, please. I have issue with, I, I don't need a microphone. <laughs> you do for the, for the television. Um, I take issue with the fact of the street the sidewalks, and you say that they are city sidewalks. True. But when they came to me and said, your sidewalk needs to be replaced, it was mine to replace. I had to pay to have a portion of my sidewalk replaced, but it's a city sidewalk. The same with the trees. They're city trees, but I have to maintain them. So it seems to me that you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. I, I, Deborah, maybe you should talk facing that way, because. Sure, actually, uh, the property I referred to, Nine Hillcrest Boulevard, where the new Noodle House has just opened, there's a sidewalk there that needs repairing. There's a tree that is lifting the sidewalk and a species of tree that tends to lose its limbs, which is not, a, not very safe. So it is the responsibility of that property owner and the city parks and public works staff will be working with that property owner for that property owner to pay for the new sidewalk and the new tree and to maintain it. it it's on city property, same as yours. Anything else from the public? C Council Member Schneider. So point of clarification, in July, the, I think it was our last meeting in July when we talked about this, the decision was to go out and purchase new benches, purchase new plants. I actually have no problems with the plants. The plants all look lovely. But it was the purchasing of things that I think would belong in a design charrette, the bicycle dis racks the newspaper racks, things like that. And I brought up if they were leased, 
If we lease them and the public didn't like them, we can give them back and go with a design that the public likes. But I believe it was told to me at that council meeting in July that no, we are not leasing any of these experiments. We are purchasing them. Therefore, whatever design has been chosen by the subcommittee is what we're all going to get. Now, I didn't go to those other uh, council, and council subcommittees or commission meetings to see what they were and I'm not exactly sure here, I would have less of a concern if we were doing this as an experiment and we were leasing various examples and letting the public see this is what we could have than if we're out purchasing them and then we're stuck with them. And then that design, in theory, should carry out through the entire Broadway, El Camino, and Park and Park. So that's the problem I have with purchasing something ahead of when we've given the public a chance to speak out on what works or hear from the bicyclists what works. So is that the case? Leasing, purchase. 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 Yes. Council Member Pappin and myself. Okay, so who chose the murals and where No, no that, murals. That was Council Member Pappin getting ahead of the game. Yes. <laughs> we will be talking to the business owners and we will probably come back to the public because a mural is a very um, personal personal and prominent fixture. And it, it'll there. go to committee. Yeah. Could you, so, uh, could you but it, it can't go to a committee that can't meet because it doesn't have quorum. Um, okay. We're not Wait. there at this point. Can you stand up so we can... <coughs> it, what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can't hear you. The operation, the operation, please, please. Um, I'm on a committee, and I didn't get any notice for this handing out. That's okay. I uh, any notice of this handing out the brooms? Uh, I, was it just the chairs of the committee that got it? No, it was we, presented at. Yeah, we, you, we sent I the. Was on it when you Carol did was the there. Clean. Yeah, you, but, Donna's cleaned with us. Yeah, absolutely. Carol was there. And, I didn't and, get and Carol, right. I think you were out of town that day because we did reach out, and I have an email that went out to the. Actually, um, I'm, ve I'm very positive you were out of town because we were sitting in the backyard of the 4th of July event and you said, I'm going to be out of town that weekend. Positively sure. What, what weekend? I don't remember, but I'm I remember the conversation. Okay, we, we reached out to... I promised Donna you were we, on it. We reached out to Honestly. every committee. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, none of us swept. None of us swept. None of us swept. <laughs> okay. For Everybody's the, a critic there. For, for the sake of time, um, we're running. Oh, we have one more. Oh, wait, we have come two. Come on, Carol. Forward, and if you could, could, could you guys talk the into the mic because the people up. at home can't hear you. That's why. You need the Deborah, microphone. can you give them the microphone, please? You're next. Are we going to talk about, can you hear me? Are we going to talk about the plants that are, that we're putting in the palm planters, you know, around the palms? Because I know we're putting in new ones, but my concern is, as it is, Parks has a real hard time weeding what we've got. So and Carol, the, on the agenda for tonight would be that our staff would be, um, we would give the, them the uh, uh, authority to make those choices. And it okay, would include them. If, if, you know, I think that they need more money, more resources to do that. Okay, thank you. We have one more comment. Hi, my name is Christina Ducote, and I just want to say I know um, $300,000 is a really big budget, and I will leave all that decision making obviously up to council and staff and all the committees, but I will say that. Uh, as a resident, I am not prepared to wait a couple more years. The scum, the spit, the cigarette butts, the gum, the loogies, and everything that is just unsanitary on our streets is disgusting. So you guys have to figure out if 300000 is a sweet spot, then, then let them roll with it. If it's not and it needs to be trimmed down because ashtrays may not be a good investment, then that's what all of these wonderful minds are here to do and move forward with. But please, I, taking my son out after, even at 6 o'clock at night, the trash cans overflowing, it, the smells, it's, it is as bad as Soma in the city. So um, just please make that go away. 
Thank you. Okay, so with that, yes, may we please, who's going to, I made the motion. You made a motion? We have a second? I, I didn't second. second. All right. We have a second, and we'll do a voice, vote. a voice vote. Council Member Lee. Aye. Council Member Pappen. Aye. Council Member Holliver. Aye. Council Member Schneider. No. And I would say aye. So with that, it passes. And thank you, Deborah, for your beautiful presentation. And we will move on, please. So next on our agenda is uh, the study session for the Millbury General Plan update, existing conditions, issues, and opportunities, and vision reports. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tanya. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, members of the Planning Commission, Tanya Ward, Community Development Director. As part of the general plan update process, the City's general plan project manager, Chelsea Payne, blouse there, um, from Interior Harnish will be providing information to you this evening uh, in several topic areas. First, the Council and Commission will be given an update on where we're at with the general plan process. Second, information will be provided on the existing uh, conditions report which will include eight subject areas, this big binder. This document is necessary to move forward with uh, setting a baseline to establish for the, the um, environmental uh, processing and analysis for the general plan. Um, it should be noted that comments can be taken uh, regarding this document um, for an extended period of time and essentially until the environmental process begins. Third, uh, the results of the public outreach uh, will be presented. The results are compiled in this document. It's the public input summary, issues, opportunities, and vision report. And finally, a draft vision statement and guiding principles uh, will be presented uh, that will provide direction to the consulting team uh, in the drafting of the general plan and the PDA specific plan uh, and the goals and the policies of both of those documents. And at this time, I would like to turn it over to Chelsea, uh, who will provide a presentation to you. And at the end of that presentation, uh, there will be an opportunity to offer comments and ask questions of staff and the general plan update consulting team. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Tanya. I'm just going to unload this big pile of documents. So we're here tonight, as Tanya said, to talk about the background report. I was hoping this, no, I'm going to need you to, um, to talk about the, the background report. I'm just going to give um, a brief introduction to that, to that report, um, highlight some of the issues and opportunities that are summarized in that report. And then the, the real focus of tonight, we want to spend some time talking about the draft vision and draft guiding principles. because. Uh, those are the, the pieces of this that we're going to be uh, using as we move forward and start to prepare the policies. So tonight's discussion, we want to try to keep it at that a higher level um, because what we're doing is we're developing the framework for moving forward. So we want to, we've, we've been talking to date about um, <coughs> on the ground issues, opportunities, and we're trying to bring it now up to a, a higher level. What's the, what are those guiding principles that are going to guide the discussion moving forward? So first, an overview of, of the project. The, your general plan is the city's long-term plan to guide future development decisions. And it addresses a whole range of issues that are relevant to the city, city decision making. Um, it covers land use, uh, transportation, public facilities and services, health and safety, the whole range of city issues. And the general plan is ultimately the community's plan. So outreach is going to be really important to this process. We've started with a community workshop back in April. We're going to be having these um, more informal study sessions throughout the process and um, several other workshops to uh, make sure that we're getting community input throughout the process. So here's an overview of, of the process. We're here in phase three. And we started the project back in 2016. Um, and we, we kicked off the project with a meeting in March with the Planning Commission and the City Council uh, right here in this room, very similar to tonight's format. 
And then on April 11th, we had a, a workshop with the community. Um, after those initial meetings, the, we have quite a large consultant team, and I'm just here as a, the project manager representing that consultant team. But we were at work compiling the 500-page existing conditions report. So that's what we've been up to behind the scenes and summarizing everything we heard from community members during that phase one um, public input. So we're here tonight to uh, present those issues and opportunities summaries and talk about the vision and the guiding principles. After this point, we'll be moving into the, the alternatives phase. And we've, we've mentioned a lot about the, we've talked a lot about the design, planning and design charrette. And we're aiming to be holding that uh, this fall. <coughs> and that's where we'll, we're gonna, the main focus is going to be on the downtown and the El Camino Real corridor. But we will be talking about some citywide issues as well. And from there, we'll be preparing a specific plan for the priority development area, or the PDA. And again, that covers the downtown and El Camino Real. We'll then prepare the general plan, which will contain the policies and the implementation programs, and conduct environmental review, and then wrap it up with adoption of all of those documents. So overall, um, it's about a two plus year process, and we're, um, we're almost at the halfway point here. So I'll just quickly summarize the public outreach that we've done uh, to date. Um, as I mentioned, we had the uh, Planning Commission City Council study session back in March, where we talked about uh, issues and opportunities and prioritized um, what were the major issues and opportunities that need to be addressed. And then in April, we had the community workshop where about 65 uh, people from the community attended. And we had different stations uh, where people shared their ideas and provided input on issues, opportunities, uh, their values, and what they envisioned here in the future in Millbrae. Following the workshop, we had an online forum that had questions posted for about two weeks. And those questions echoed the questions that we had at the community workshop. So people could elaborate on their input, or people that weren't able to attend the workshop had an opportunity to weigh in. During March and April, we also held interviews with different stakeholders. Uh, these are longtime residents, members of the Chamber of Commerce, Historical Society, business owners, a whole range of stakeholders. And we talked to them about what they see as the major issues and what are the major opportunities that we should be capitalizing on in this general plan update. So all of the input that we, we heard from all of these outreach efforts is summarized in the, the phase one public input summary report. And I'll just, um, before we get into a summary of that, I'm just going to introduce the existing conditions report. So the existing conditions report is um, it's a lengthy document, about a 500-page document, that covers the whole range of issues that we look at in the general plan update. And it covers, uh, specifically, it's, it's organized by these nine chapters that, you sh that are shown here. Uh, there was some confusion about chapter four. Um, I apologize for this. Um, if you got a hard copy, you may have noticed that we skipped right over chapter four. Uh, we tried to correct that online. Um, but chapter four is going to be the background information from your housing element. And the city adopted the housing element um, in May of 2015. So at this point, we're not looking for any additional public input on, on the housing element. Um, we, we didn't include it here because it's already an adopted document. At the very end of the process, we're going to fold that in to this report. But at this point, it's, it's being kept as a separate document. So the existing conditions report provides a snapshot of Millbrae's existing conditions across the whole range of topics that are covered in those nine chapters. And it's a policy neutral, which means it's just background information. And it, but it provides the context for the city to make policy decisions. So it's a document that we reference throughout to make sure as we're drafting policies that they're addressing the specific, um, the specific issues here in Millbrae. Um, as Tanya said, the document is going to remain a draft until the city adopts the updated general plan. So there's no, uh, there's no short period for public comment. It's going to remain a draft. You can take your time to read the document. Uh, we've already started to receive comments from the public, and we, we really appreciate that review. I'm sure we didn't get it all right. So 
Um, if, if you do have comments, uh, we ask that you, um, you can send them to the email address that's shown here. This is um, the email address where we receive all comments on this project. Um, you can also contact me, a member of staff, um, but our preferred method would be to get it through email so we can keep all of the comments organized. So again, I'm not going to go into any detail on that existing conditions report because it does remain a draft. Um, instead, I'm going to um, give you a, a quick summary of the assets, issues, and opportunities report. There are three points at which we're going to open it up for discussion tonight. Um, after I present the summary of issues and opportunities, we can have some discussion about um, any comments you have on that. Uh, but we are going to try to keep that to you know, 10 or 15 minutes because, again, the purpose of tonight is really to dive in on the, the vision and the guiding principles. But we do want to make sure there's an opportunity um, to provide any feedback on this. So first, um, what are the assets, issues, and opportunities, or how do we how do we define those terms? So as we write new policies and programs in the general plan, we want to make sure <coughs> that those policies and any changes that we make to the plan land uses are preserving the city's assets, um, addressing any issues or challenges, and then capitalizing on opportunities. So assets are, are uh, things to preserve and enhance the valued places and features that make Millbury a great city. For issues, we want to address any pressing challenges that are limiting progress or impacting quality of life. And for opportunities, um, we build upon things that can improve the quality of life and make the city an even better place to live and work. So here, A represents asset, I issue, and O an opportunity. Um, We've been talking about downtown tonight. Downtown is a key asset here in the city, and it's going to be a major focus of this process because there's going to be a specific plan that focuses on the downtown and El Camino Real corridor. These are some of the, the issues and opportunities that rose to the top and that, that we heard um, time and again through all of our conversations with people. And the first is the lack of diversity in businesses in the downtown. And the general plan is an opportunity to consider ways to cultivate a more diverse a mix of businesses that can better serve the whole range of resident needs. Um, as it, it was mentioned earlier, that 90, I think it was 90% of tax dollars here are spent elsewhere, so there's a large retail leakage. We can look at ways to try to capture some of that and Im improve local spending, create more local spending opportunities. Another thing we heard time and again was uh, parking issues downtown. And the general plan, through the general plan, we can explore some uh, parking strategies for the downtown area. Uh, another issue is the need for investments in public spaces. And there's already been a lot of conversation about that tonight. And we'll be continuing that conversation through the general plan process. And the general plan, we can look at ways to um, invest in the downtown explore um, programming opportunities, and again, explore whether the business improvement district would be an appropriate tool or how to implement something like that. So under the, the topic of circulation, uh, the city's circulation system is really a major asset here. Millbury is the transit hub for the Bay Area. You have great highway access, proximity to the airport, BART, Caltrain, and then the future high-speed rail station. So. I don't know of any other city anywhere that has that kind of connectivity. Um, but with that comes some traffic congestion issues. Um, and so the general plan is going to look at ways to address those traffic issues. Um, another thing we heard a lot about was, and you see it in the background report, is the higher than average collisions on El Camino Real. So we want to be looking at ways to improve safety along that corridor and address traffic congestion. Under the topic of uh, walkability and bikeability, uh, the project can identify ways to improve uh, walkability. And the city has received a grant to prepare what's called an active transportation plan. That's really a bike and pedestrian plan. And so that's going to, uh, through this process, we're going to be focusing on ways that we can close the gaps in the trail network, create more bike and pedestrian connections between downtown and the station area. Uh, so that's going to be a, a major focus of this process. Um, on the topic of neighborhoods, um, we heard a lot about 
Millbrae, the neighborhoods of very attractive uh, historic neighborhoods, a whole diversity of housing types. And with that, there's a high demand for housing, not just here in Millbrae, but across the Bay Area, um, and limited supply. And with that, we've seen housing costs increase significantly. And the city also has a very limited supply of vacant land for new housing to meet that demand. So through the specific plan, uh, particularly, we're going to be looking at opportunities um, to identify sites for infill and redevelopment to maybe in incorporate some um, additional housing opportunities. We also heard issues um, from residents related to their neighborhoods, uh, particularly loss of views from second story additions, um, excessive tree pruning that's altering the character of neighborhoods, and a need to maintain the quality of the streets. Um, so the general plan can address ways to preserve and enhance the city's existing neighborhoods. And lastly, on the topic of city identity, uh, we heard a lot from residents about um, how they value the small town feel here in Millbrae. Um, it's, it's a safe community, it has engaged citizens, excellent schools, and relatively affordable housing for the Bay Area. Um, but we also heard that the city uh, lacks a really strong identity, that the cities along the peninsula in, in many cases tend to kind of blend together, and you don't know when you're in Burlingame or Millbrae. So I think we can look at ways uh, through this process to create more clear gateways into Millbrae. And then we heard a lot about uh, the need that downtown is not really as strong as it could be, that there's a lot of potential downtown. It, it has a really great character, but there could be some enhancements to really make it a place where people want to, want to go. Um, so we're going to be looking at ways to better define the downtown and make it more of a draw. Um, so with that, that's the, it's not, the issues and opportunities aren't meant to cover every single issue and opportunity that we're going to address through this process. And we're going to address all the requirements of um, you know, open space, environmental resources, climate change. But this is a summary of what we heard again and again from talking to people. So uh, with that, we're going to um, open it up for discussion. And um, we want to just spend maybe 10 or 15 minutes just talking about, you know, did we, did we get it right in the summary report? Um, are there other major assets, issues, and opportunities that we should be thinking about? Um, and which of those that we talked about tonight should be a priority for the general plan? So we'll start with the public comments. Anybody have any uh, concern? There you go, Dan. My name is Dan Rogers, and my business is at 446 Broadway. I reside in Governor One Chadbourne. I have a couple topics that relate Can you put to the our mic discussion up? tonight. Um, dear honorable members of the City Council and Pl esteemed Planning Commission, um, I suggest we consider creating a one block pedestrian only access on Broadway only between Hillcrest and La Cruz. The Art and Wine Festival illustrated how great the activity can be on Broadway. Can you put the mic up? Retail and restaurants will benefit from this minor change. Number two, or as an alternative to one above, and similar to Burling what Burlingame has done on Burlingame Avenue, consider altering <coughs> the existing herringbone parking on Broadway, at least between Hillcrest and La Cruz, to allow for wider sidewalk use on the same block of Broadway. While, while number one above would be preferable, either one or two could revitalize the streetscape and increase commercial activity by providing mean, meaningful, safe access and public accommodation for more hours of the day and evening for residents and visitors. To offset the loss of public parking of either one or two, consider um, undergrounding uh, subterranean parking for uh, employees under the Magnolia parking lot. And to help pay for this uh, project, add some housing above the parking lot on Magnolia, maybe one or two stories of housing. Um, currently, another approach would be currently Hemlock Avenue from its corner at Hillcrest and site one of Millbury Stationery specific plan. There's a new where there's a new extension to California Drive. It's currently zoned commercial on one side of Hemlock and single family on the other. 
I think this should probably be rezoned to high density and uh, add some more housing in a viable way with retail down below. Don't forget California Drive would be extended to Hillcrest in this uh, dynamic. Okay, both sides of Hemlock would be uh, significantly upzoned. It would encourage assemblage. It would drive the prices higher for those residents. They could sell their home, probably buy a, for the same amount they could buy a home in the Meadows or Meadow Glen today. Um, the other benefit here is this would further help reduce traffic at El Camino and uh, Melbury Avenue. This has been a congested intersection. We've tried to do our best with the California extension going to Victoria. This will just further assist in helping to delineate that traffic. Um, over time, nature will take its course, and I think development will be positive in this area. This is an isolated street of residential that backs on the commercial and the tracks on the outside. It's a viable location for multifamily, I guess. Thank you. All right, thank you. So those are some, there's some really great comments there. And um, the next step in this process is going to be to start to talk about some of those solutions. Um, so I, I encourage you to come to the planning and design charrette where we're gonna start to talk about, about those, some of those ideas for um, the solutions in the, in the next step. Um, tonight we wanna kinda just, we're in the information gathering stage and um, I, if you could submit those written comments, that'd be great to just have. We collect, we're collecting all sorts of written comments. Great. Um, so any, any other comments on the issues and opportunities? Hi, I wanna, I wanna thank you for all the work that you did. My, my concern is the lack of community input and lack of, um, I mean, there's a bunch of us here, but nowhere near as many as could be. Our last meeting, we only had, the big meeting, we only had 0.3% of the whole city of Millbrae giving input. Um, your listserv only reaches 1.1%. Um, I'm, I'm curious to know how many stakeholders you actually did interview. I know that many of them could not attend, and I think that your turnout was probably less than you hoped for. Um, the website was only open for two weeks and drew between two and four responses to each question. Um, I'm wondering where the print copies of the newsletters were distributed and where the flyers were posted. And I don't have a solution, but there's got to be a way to get more of the community here and involved. Um, I, I think we're working with limited input, and I find that frustrating. And I also find it frustrating that the housing element will not be included because that's such an essential piece of Millbrae. Thank you. Do, you. do you want to explain the housing, how it's already been approved, why sure. it's not there? Uh, yeah, there's a, the housing element, it's part of the general plan, uh, but it has some special requirements that set it apart. So we look at it on a different time frame. The state sets the mandated deadline for when that has to be prepared, and it goes through a rigorous review process with the state. Um, so that's already been done. The city uh, did that process back in 2015. We will, as, as part of the general plan, we will look at um, if any changes are needed to the housing element. But at this point, um, if the city were to update the, the housing element, there are a lot of additional requirements and the state has to get involved. And that process um, happens every eight years. That cycle ended in 2015. Um, but again, if, any, if there are any major changes through the general plan process that uh, really affect the housing element, the city will go back and, and amend the housing element. So any other comments re with regards to, um, did the firm get it right? Did they get our issues? Did they see some opportunities? My name is Christopher Del Negro. I'm a resident here in Millbrae. I also sit on the Parks and Recreation Commission as the chair this year. Um, I'm actually interested in the fact that you said that you're addressing issues of barriers from the past or that may stop something from being implemented. I look back at the 1998 plan and there's things like connecting the trails through Millbrae in that plan that never got implemented. How are we going to avoid having the same barriers that stopped us in the past from being able to implement plans from being in this plan? Uh, 
Hi, I'm Jeffrey Tong. I'm a resident of San Bruno. I'd like to discuss the circulation element. Um, I'm on San Bruno's Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee, and I'm just going to speak to you as a resident of San Bruno, not as a uh, city or a committee representative. But from my observations, our entire committee uh, came through Millbrae using every conceivable route. And the route on the east is San Antonio, the route on the west is Linden, and the center route is El Camino Real. From the perspective of international and commuters, international bicyclists and commuters, El Camino Real is the only route into Millbrae. Um, how do you make that pedestrian and bicycle friendly? There's generally about four different ways. Number one is to reduce the, the width of the lane from about 12 feet to 10 feet, and it's, it's quite doable. Other cities have done it before. Uh, reduce the number of lanes from six to four, which is generally just matching Millbrae and using the excess lanes as cycle tracks or protected bike lanes has been done before. Um, San Bruno has already established a relationship with Caltrans. San Mateo County has already established a, a Streets Alive or uh, Parks Alive event. So the precedents are there for Millbrae to cooperate with other cities to make the transit corridor uh, much friendlier for pedestrians and pedestrian, in, in bicyclists. Thank you. Sorry, just for clarification, Jeffrey, did you submit your very detailed letter? Okay, thank you. No, we, we appreciate all the effort that went into that. Thank you very much. Um, hi, my name is Yo-Yo. I live on Hemlock Avenue. Um, I took um, a good read of the um, general plan as it is so far with all the chapters. And I think that uh, one of my comments is on chapter two regarding demographics. And uh, one of my concerns is how there isn't enough focus. Uh, it actually almost intentionally avoids mentioning race as one of the things that we should focus on in the general plan. And I think race in Millbrae is an asset, an issue, and uh, an opportunity, you know, um, all in one. And, um, you know, in, on, in the 2010 census, we're talking 42% Asian, 47% white. It's been six years by now. Maybe we have more Asian people than, than uh, white people. And I think that the way that we develop Millbrae, the way that the general plan is written, needs to incorporate the needs of, of our whole community. We lack civic engagement. We lack identity because nobody is engaged in, in Millbrae politics. We just take a look at this room and the people that are in this room, no insult to everybody else. We're just saying that, you know, Asian people don't come out and participate. Young people don't come out and participate. Yet we're trying to write a plan for the next 26 years. I mean, sorry, 24 years. How are we, how are we going to approach this properly? And I, I don't think uh, what we have right now is the right way, where we have a lot of subcommittees that have the exact same people sitting on them as other committees. We don't have new feedback. We have the same old way of doing things and that just doesn't work. We're not thinking about the needs of all our community members, just the ones that are coming here to participate. And I can just say that um, I didn't hear about the previous meetings as you know, someone who is not actively involved and not actively uninvolved. Um, I only heard about this because I accidentally stumbled, it, uh, stumbled across it in the newspaper. I don't think we're do doing enough outreach. You know, we're not encouraging people to come and we can't solve the issues by blaming people who aren't here. We need to actually pull people in and uh, you know, speaking earlier on the downtown improvement, if we want to improve downtown, it's going to involve reaching out to business owners. You know, if you want people to have skin in the game, they have to actually be here sitting here. And that's not what we have here today. We have here many people who express concerns, but again, we almost completely ignore the fact that Millbury has you know, so many more Asian people. We have a lot of people with different needs and that's not being considered. So I'd like that, um, I, I hope that the demographics reflected in the general plan don't uh, currently only reflects economic demographics such as what types of jobs are available here, uh, income, uh, household size, things like that. But we are not talking about um, 
We're not talking about race. We're not talking about those type of specific things that will really affect our community. And if we're going to talk about a community plan, it's going to have to involve the makeup of our community. Mm, I think that's illegal. Uh, can I ask a question? Uh, can you let us know uh, one of the lacking parts of this plan that I saw that there was not enough social media included in the outreach. So how do most people here, if you wouldn't mind sharing with us, how you get, generally get your news? Is it Twitter, Facebook, or next door? Next door? Uh, because it is important. We, we completely agree to reach as many people as we possibly can. So uh, that was one of the notes that I made here, that we needed to expand our outreach to include other aspects of social media. So if you have ideas along that front, how we are missing reaching people and how we can get to them, we please share them with us. I, I would personally say that um, I actually have an app that happens to feed into Patch. I didn't know Patch existed before, but it seems like a good community news source. But again, that's very limited. I think a good way maybe is to put announcements into our water bills, something that everybody gets. You know, we could easily be capitalizing on that. Um, and at the end of the day, it's very, I think, intimidating for an Asian person to come over here and express their, their opinions. Um, you know, it may sound a bit ludicrous, but um, you know, these are people who maybe don't speak the language. Maybe they feel like they're not qualified to speak on the issue. And especially when we have here, you know, a room full of people who don't really reflect the composition of Millbury, it's, it's very intimidating. So I hope that, in the, you know, we can do active outreach, as in sending mailers, sending people to go knock on doors, actually talking to people, you know, getting them to give those, that input. Because we can't just set a date and then tell people to voluntarily come in. I don't think that's going to work. And, um, you know, if you keep scheduling these meetings, the only people that are going to come in are the same old people, you know week after week, week after week, month after month, year after year. That's not going to change. Uh, you know, everyone knows who comes to city council meetings. And that's not young people. That's not Asian people. And that is not like the, the real, the, the, these are not the real stakeholders in the community. I really think the real stakeholders in the community are the business owners who are in the shadows, you know, counting the money. The, the Asian people, the, the people who come to Millbury to dine, to, you know, uh, to shop, things like that. You know, we, we need to talk to everybody and not just this select group of people. I think that's the way to say it. We need to talk to everyone because you will not find me uh, targeting any race for any general plan. So I'm going to ask that we include everyone. And, and think that's what we're focused on yeah. doing. And to reflect the population within the city of Millbury, you'll notice that a lot of the announcements are bilingual to reflect that aspect. And we have to give due respect to our colleague, Council Member Lee, as a representative, and we encourage more activity. Now, as for the youth, that has been a problem throughout the history of polit politics, is getting them engaged. So again, we are looking for ideas to reach out to the youth in this community. And we did have at one meeting some representatives from the high school who showed an active uh, they were going to have their own kind of uh, committee as far as the new recreation uh, facility would hopefully include in that. So again, we're looking for positive ideas to move forward, including everyone within this community. Every So if you have various ideas, please share them with us as to the way to reach out and reach everyone within the community. Council Member Schneider. Uh, I wanted to go backwards to the comment, um, Janet's comment on the housing element. I'm not sure if this was in the housing element last year, but there have been some law changes that if they're trying to encourage more second units, what we used to call mother-in-law units, if the property, if the house is located within, I believe, a half a mile of a transit hub and possibly transit corridors, then people can put a second unit in without what was formerly required parking. So I am all for trying to create affordable housing, but I live 0.9 miles from BART and possibly less than half a mile from the bus stop on the corner of Taylor and El Camino Real. And I'm concerned of the impact of cars into neighborhoods because basically it's taken out of the hands of the planning commission or city council to say, no, you can put a second unit in up to a certain number of square footage and you don't have to provide off-street parking for it. And I think that that's happened since our housing element has been planned. So for all of you there, we've got that difficult task of trying to make sure we're creating affordable housing, but still making our neighborhoods livable. 
and given that i have a house next door that's acting like a boarding house with eight cars parked on the street i don't want to see that happen to anybody else so i'd like to see that updated in this plan even though the housing element was done last year please check and see i think it was approved at the end of last legislative cycle but housing is not my specialty area what about planning do you have any comment on that you guys are awful quiet over there <laughs> so you're, you're referring to recent state law about um, reduced parking standards for affordable housing types. For second unit. Right, and these are... For second units. And there have been some state laws passed that yeah, they do supersede local, local laws. I don't know for sure if your housing element addresses that, but it's something we can look at through the general Thank plan. You. Other comments? Yes. I can, I'm Stephanie Cordy, and I just can't keep my mouth shut. Um, I agree with you totally that the communication is not really flowing. And I have a way. Um, we had the same problem at Mills High School for years. We had Asians and Caucasians and whatever. When my children started in 88, we had, um, well, you could count the Asians at Mills High School. Uh, that changed quickly, um, and nowadays Mills is 63% Asian, which includes everybody, and the rest is Latino, whatever. Uh, Caucasian are very minority. So the reason I say that is we also had PTO, whatever you name it, and Mr. Lee will probably agree with me, uh, there was no participation. It was all the little group of Caucasians that was running the show. Uh, that changed when we got hold of, when I got hold of some Asian ladies that were very well known <laughs> in the Asian society. And they pulled people in and it didn't matter that they didn't speak English, they could still serve coffee and they could still participate and little over time. Now Mills has a very active PTO and Excuse me, Wayne, but I believe you're very active there too, right? And they were pulled in. So maybe uh, if city council or city of Millbury sends flyers to the grammar schools, to the middle schools, to the high schools that are being given out to the parents, and the kids are saying, hey, mom, dad, listen, look what's coming up. This is where I'm going to live. Maybe that would be a matter of communication. And just one other thing. Um, if in all this planning, I don't know if this is the right place, but we have this new signage in Millbrae traffic, which is this color on white. I call it maroon and white. It's beautiful. It blends in wonderful into the trees, into the housing. But if you're driving along Millbrae Avenue uh, around the skate park, and suddenly, and you have somebody in front that you're watching because they are looking. Behind you, you have somebody on your tail. And the skaters are coming across, and dog ladies are walking across. Uh, you see this sign maybe two seconds before. Now, that sign has five directions on it, written about this big. And one of them says, Transit Hub. I have asked 20 people, and everybody said, what the hell is a transit hub? <laughs> so if we have signage for traffic, please make it simple and make it so people see it before they are past it. If this is part of the improvement, please make it an improvement, not a blend in. Thank you. So those are Mills colors, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joanne McMahon, and I'm very involved with the library in Millbrae. And I'd like to say that there are so many people that pass through the portals of the doors of, of the library. So if you want to, to distribute information, please talk to Tom, Beautiful. our uh, librarian, our uh, branch manager, and work with him. Because we're there for the city. The city owns the building. And this, to me, is now we don't have a rec center so i think we should make a lot of use of the library to and the library gives out information to everybody good so thank you that is my idea <coughs> good suggestion i'd like to comment on the parking and the fact that they're thinking about putting in more 
parking lots or multiple, multiple, multiple stories. And uh, I think that the West Coast, especially San Francisco and the Bay Area, is becoming very much like New York. I know a lot of my daughter's friends who do not have cars. They don't want the insurance. They don't want the upkeep. They call Uber or they call a cab, or they call their friends who do have cars. So I think in the future, and I'm talking maybe 20, 30 years, we're not going to have that many cars anymore. I really do believe. I mean, you go to New York, nobody has a car. So just th food for thought. Good any, other, any other comments before the vision? Oh. Meet or different ethnicities to come to these meetings. How about putting flyers in the restaurants? Good. In all of the businesses, because they're mostly Asian owned. So put them in there and maybe that will encourage them to come. If there has to be an interest. I see a lot of Asians when I walk on the Sawyer camp. I tell everybody, come to the meetings. They just look at me with a blank look. So there has to be an interest. If there's no interest, I don't know how you're going to get them here, even with flyers or going to their door or whatever. Food? So. <laughs> Food. Um, I have to say there's a misconception because a lot of uh, Asians in, in Mulberry don't eat at the Asian restaurants. Trust, trust me. They, they eat, they eat there, but they don't eat there every day. <laughs> okay, so should we go on to the next stage? Um, yeah, we're, right. we're going to have two more points of discussion here tonight on the vision and then on the guiding principles. My wife's all worried I may say something. <laughs> so I totally, I totally agree with you, you know, totally. I've, we've been coming to about four meetings. Every time we come here, it's the same people. And I've even made a comment, I can't believe there's no Asians here. All right? And one way, I think, and even the businesses in, in, who owns a business in Millbury here? Besides this, John, all right. Where are all the businesses? They should be here. You're talking about downtown. Where in, in the hell are all the owners? You know, give, go door to door down the business and tell them you have a meeting here. I have a business in San Francisco for 20 years, and the sidewalk thing blows me away if you ever, uh, had a business in San Francisco, you have to do everything, you know, or you get fined. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we don't tax them if we clean their driveways, mm -hmm. you know. So, but I totally agree with you. And I think uh, you have to get the businesses down here, maybe that, uh, get the residents down here then. I just want to add too that maybe we should um, do flyers and put them in multiple languages, you know. Yeah. Yeah, or have you done that? I don't know. There okay. Are... Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, before, before we get on there, um, there, there were certain things in this section that um, concerned me, and I think uh, we need to bring to the attention. Uh, a particular interest is the existing land use, which I think is very important to how we proceed moving forward here, because 59% of the land use here is single residence. Only 4.7 is commercial. 7.8 is parks and open spaces. And only 0.2% is vacant. So as we move forward and as we look at a general plan and what we're trying to encourage here, I need to emphasize the fact that we need to keep a balance, a commercial balance here, in order to maintain revenue so that we can continue supporting our infrastructure and the quality of life within Millbrae. So we need to focus very strongly on that. And I thought part of the plan was lacking here. Uh, I also need to note, too, that 25% of our revenue comes from hotel taxes. So if we are moving forward here and we want to continue a revenue stream, uh, we need to focus on the type of businesses that we're bringing into the city so that we can proceed with a new rec center and our failing infrastructure. 95% uh, 
of the people that live in Millbrae commute outside to work in Millbrae. I think the majority of us here do that as well. And 90% of the people that actually work in Millbrae commute into Millbrae. So we need to focus on, as was noted, our transportation hub, <laughs> transit hub, uh, and making that the most accessible that it can be. So it is mentioned briefly in here, but I think throughout, and I will submit them in the various areas, that we need to focus on getting trans people to use public transportation as much as possible. Those of us who are on 101 now, the moment you hit Millbrae and SFO, it comes to a practically a dead stop. Uh, if we want to improve our environment, to reduce greenhouse gases and all of that, we need to make sure that our transportation hub is utilized to the best possible uh, resource there. Uh, part of the issues I had with the plan too is that when you talk about our station area, you haven't included what development is already there. So it misrepresents to anyone looking at this plan as to the housing we have there already and what commercial developments are there. So I think it's important that we modify the diagrams or outlays here to reflect what's currently there. Where, where do you, could you explain? Yeah, I mean, it's just like a blank area that says station area. Yeah. Um, it doesn't include the housing elements that are already there, the commercial aspects. Retail, hotel. The retail, the, yeah. So if you, I mean, anybody who reads, again, a general plan needs to know what is there and which way we are, what direction we're headed in. So I think those are the important aspects, and I have other notes that I will submit. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just want to make one comment. When Gina can you, uh, hit the end. There, Keep talking to Mike so that the audience at home can hear you. Just to uh, add to what Gina says, when she's speaking about what is there, say in the BART station area, it's not there yet. It's in title. It's going to be built, but it should be in the general plan because no. it is in title. Actually, the current developments are not there. We're talking about the other side of El Camino Real. We're talking about the um, what's where In and Out Burger is. None of okay. I mean that stuff is already there and it's not reflected. Okay. So what's you're currently commercial. right? Well, no, no commercial residential. You're talking the station okay. area is a bigger area, but right now the buildings that are there are not reflected. If that's what it sounded like, that's why I asked you to clear it. Oh, sorry. Okay, so that that's where we wanted to make sure that that was emphasized. Yo yo. Um, I just hope as well that um, in our in our general plan, um, when it comes to traffic, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, commutes, things like that, we um, you know stay open to our options because uh, you know in 24 years, actually maybe four years, we may have all self-driving cars on the road, and maybe traffic will be a thing of the past. And you know I don't think you know the city. I would disagree with a previous speaker who said that we're moving towards. Uh, more bikes. I don't see more bikes. You know, I see more and more cars. Um, you know, and I, I'd like to make sure that the the observations that are being taken by the people who are writing up this plan um, are being very realistic to the current circumstances in Millbury. I think it's really important that we um, treat this plan as if we were handing it to someone who's never been to Millbury before, and that this person would be able to read this plan and understand exactly what's going on here. We can't take anything as a given, and I hope that you know the the entire circumstance of what's going on right now in Millbrae is properly captured um, so that we can you know, base our um, plans on, on something that's accurate and concrete and not very um, abstract. Okay, Council Member Schneider, and then with respect to the time, I'm gonna ask that we um, move on so our presenter can be on. I think one of the complications is that this study, this big thick one, is existing conditions. And you've asked us to give most of our comments in writing at a later date. So you're trying to help us work on vision. So I have some things that I'd love to see in this. I had a hard time trying to figure out, well, do we have any aspect of it existing 
and where would it go? Things like the health element that I would like to see. But if that's going to come up later in your discussion, if it's vision zero, things that I'd like to see us have. Should I hold on? Yeah, the, okay, the what we want to see in the future is the next step. Okay. This is trying to, there's no, there's, there are, this is not a plan. This is a report that documents existing conditions and there's, there are no policies in here. There's no decisions. Um, there's no reflection of the future. There's just what's on the ground, snapshot of today. What we want to talk about next is uh, a, a, the draft vision that we, <clears throat> we've put together based on what we have heard to date. So we want, we're presenting this tonight. We want to hear feedback on whether um, this resonates with you, uh, whether it captures the essence of, of what you want to see the city become in the future. In addition to the vision, uh, we've also drafted guiding principles. Those go into more detail and provide more guidance on specific topics. So not all of the topics in the guiding principles are included in the vision. The vision is high level, big picture, uh, what the city wants to become in the future. And again, it's, it's based on all the input we heard to date. Um, so I guess I got ahead of myself. <laughs> what is a vision? Um, it's, it's again, it's the ideal future aspirations that you want to work towards. Um, it's supposed to be inspiring, um, inspiring the decision makers as they make decisions and the community to get engaged. Um, it should be unique to Millbrae and to local circumstances here. Um, should be comprehensive, long-term looking into the future, and again, we're, we're looking 25 years into the future, so you want to be open to what the city will become. The draft vision that we, we have here tonight is um, from all of the, the sources that we talked about, um, all of the public input from phase one, um, findings from the background report, and um, the, the issues and opportunities report actually contains the draft vision statement. Um, it's, I'm going to point to... It starts on page 25 of this report, and there's a vision statement at the top and the guiding principles. Um, but I, I will read it for you here uh, right now, and then we're going to open it back up for discussion. So the draft vision statement. In 2040, Millbrae is the gem of the peninsula, distinguished locally for its strong sense of community and regionally as the Bay Area's premier transit hub. There's that word again. Residents continue to be proud to call Millbrae home because of its pristine views of the bay, attractive residential neighborhoods, distinguished schools, quaint and lively downtown, and active civic life. Millbrae is a regional destination because of its access to transit, vibrancy of El Camino Real, diversity of retail and restaurants, and charming atmosphere. Millbrae exemplifies a healthy and prosperous community. So um, we'll leave this statement up here, but I'm going to just ask Michael to flip forward to the questions. What we want to hear from you tonight, does the vision statement resonate with you? Um, are there any big ideas that are missing from this vision for the future? Um, so any other ideas and suggestions that you have? If you want to go back to showing the vision. So are we, should we do public comment first and then bring it to I think Council Member Schneider is ready. Okay. I, would, I think it sounds lovely. Maybe something that reflects for all ages. Okay. So I, I should and mention... Beef up safety. And safety, okay. I should mention um, Renee is over here taking notes. We also have Jeffrey in the back taking very detailed notes. So you might not see me writing things down, but um, everything's getting captured. Um, I think the strong sense of community and the, the words community should be struck. Um, I think it's difficult to call Mil I, I think, you know, when I think of Millbury in the future, I don't think of strong community. I think of strong economic, you know, downtown. I, I think of money. I think of people passing through, um, you know, an area of economic exchange, something like that. I really, I'm, I'm very skeptical and I think others should be as well, that we would, you know, currently we don't have a strong community and that somehow, you know, through adding more money, having more people come through, that we can somehow build a strong community in 2040. I'm very skeptical about that. But um, correct me if you think that's just my personal um, view on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Lynn Wood. I actually think we do. Kathleen, Her do you want to identify yourself? Sorry, pardon me? Oh, sorry, I'm Kathleen Kimura, and I chair the uh, committee for the Millbury Japanese uh, Culture Festival, which now is in its 11th year. There is also a Lunar New Year Festival. There's an Art and Wine Festival. I really think Millbury does have a strong community. Um, I think I've lived here for almost 40 years, and I've been involved in the community since I got here. My husband is Asian, so I'm very aware of the Asian community. Um, there are many representatives of the Asian community here, so many different languages are spoken. I also hear a lot of Russian spoken, so I think we're a very diverse community, and I think we're trying to do the best job we can. And I think that if we have a positive attitude, um, I think we can go a long way. So uh, I, that's just what I want to say. Thank you. Well said. I agree. Other comments on the vision? Again, I'm Jeffrey Tong from San Bruno. I'm a bicyclist, 100%. And what I've noticed in my city, San Bruno, very similar to Milbrae, the only real difference between San Bruno and Milbrae is the fog. <laughs> but the rolling hills are, are identical. I see the major problem in Millbrae is that you don't have an electric shuttle taking people up to Skyline Boulevard. Bicycles, it's easy to go to work every single day on a bicycle. Jeffy, but with all due respect, can you, we, we're talking about the vision statement. And we're, we're getting really short on time. So if you have okay. something to say about the vision statement, I would ask you to please focus on that. OK. Um, regarding your community, getting down to downtown, in, uh, I, th I think what I was getting at was Gina Pappen was saying 95% of your population uh, commute outside of Millbrae. And, and a majority of those that work here do not live here. In order to get the people from the hills down to downtown, you're going to have to have more than Uber or uh, one of these taxi rides to, uh, to bring people in. And I think that's a large part of your, uh, th the lack of community. Thank you. Other comments on the vision statement? I'd, re I'd be remiss of saying this, but um, nothing in the basic body of this actually exemplifies healthy, um, about active outdoors or anything like that. Um, an active civic life doesn't necessarily mean an active life physically, but um, nothing supports the last statement of Millbury exemplifying a healthy and prosperous community. From a personal perspective, I would like to see more on that. From the chairman of Park and Rec? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess when I read this, there's a couple of things that I just want us to make sure we watch for. We're using a lot of flowery language here to describe a future that we're going to have to build goals to. So when I see things like pristine views of downtown, of the bay, when I see even the phrase strong sense of community, if we're going to, this looks like the vision statement of the future, we need to be able to have it quantifiable and achievable and supported by goals that go underneath it. And so I would say this where you can avoid flowery language that can have multiple interpretations of what it means, caution, you know, err on the side of being more conservative than being extremely liberal, because at some point we're gonna to have to define what that strong sense of community is, what a premier transit hub really means, what a quaint and lively downtown really is, because we're gonna be spending money to make that happen. And, and all of those details will come in, we'll have another level of detail in the guiding principles, and another in the goals, and even more specifics in the policies. So again, the vision is supposed to be aspirational. It is in some ways supposed to be flowery in that it's supposed to be what the ultimate of what you're trying to achieve. So I do, I understand that each one of these will get interpreted, but as we get into the policies, we can critique um, the specifics of how this is achieved. Council Member Lee. Thank you. Um, I I, I think we should change regional to more international. I mean, the airport, that's one of the um, opportunities, I don't think we captured enough, is the 50 million visitors that come through that airport, $2 billion or $10 billion worth of revenue that, that the airport generates. I think that that should be part of our plan capture um, as part of our transit. The high-speed rail that's coming through, um, I think there's, there's some, something about uh, inviting Visitors, because they, they're the biggest spenders in Millbury. They, they actually help prop up our economy. If you look at property taxes, number one, which kind of dismays me, because that means there's a lot of pressure on the property owners. 
to um, provide the funding for the city. But um, after that, then comes hotels. Then after that comes retail. So, but our retail is very small uh, compared to other cities, as you can see. So, um, we are a house. We are a uh, bedroom community. We're not a, we're not as rich as Hillsboro, but we're almost we're pretty similar in terms of our makeup in retail. Um, so, they have zero retail. Yeah. well, they have zero retail. <laughs> I'm being kind. Yeah. There goes I'm being that kind. Positive attitude. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so let's. Um, Council Member Schneider. Let's capture those, please. I'm sorry, I've already jumped to guiding principles. I guess I don't usually spend a huge amount of time on vision, but I agree with what the public has said. Um, I we, think maybe, it, it, but tell me if we're not quite ready to jump to guiding principles. Guiding principles are gonna be the very next topic. Very and I'll, next be, topic. I'll be going through each of those in detail. So, uh, but to talk about bicycle pedestrian, and because I do serve on CCAG, the city, county, county and city government bicycle pedestrian committee, we mention it, but it's like a fluff. It's fluffing out there. We're not talking about the healthy things in town. We're not talking about the proximity to trails or the connectivity to trails. So I would support. Um, and in light of our community center, uh, it's an opportunity to really come up with a much more active community for all age groups. All races, all age groups. Um, can I? I do have a question with your transit hub. I don't know if anybody else takes BART, but airport, you don't get there on the weekday. You only get here there on the weekend. So with that happening, how do you expect to have this be a transit hub? That doesn't make sense to me. We're working on details just like that. Um, but I think that's the next part. Uh, what I did want to suggest along the lines in keeping our vision, there's a big vision here, maybe a way to incorporate that is somehow, and I don't know how you describe it, uh, but easy to get around or uh, easy mobility walkability mobility. walkability yeah I don't know how you, I don't, I'm not quite sure how you say it but if we had something along those lines in here I think that would capture a lot of what Accessible. people are trying to commute I don't know how you say it okay this is a joint meeting guys do you want to we're taking it over here <laughs> I got stuff Okay. Um, there's no mention of the arts. I think a, a vibrant a cultural center would be nice enhancement. Um, there's no mention of jobs. Wayne just said that we're a bedroom community. Are we going to continue to be nothing but a bedroom community where 95% of the people work someplace else? Or do we want, do we want to bring any jobs here? Um, the report, the big report we're not talking about tonight does talk about um, population increases. Millbury's population could increase significantly by 2040. Um, does that change the quaint nature of this town and how does it do that? Um, so you've got quaint and charming with lively and vibrant. They can go together, but maybe they don't completely. Um, and I'm not sure if you drop the transit part, this doesn't sound very unique. This could be San Bruno, this could be Burlingame. So how, what is the unique features in Millbrae that we can really enhance to make this vision statement ours, not just the white swath of the peninsula, which is all awesome, but how's Millbrae special? So that's what I got. Thank you. All right. Yes. And, oh, sorry. This is just one more little thing to add in there is for the vision for me, I, I take a lot of classes and I go to other cities to take them to park and rec. I'm like a park and rec. I love park and rec. And I am new to Millbrae. I've been here five years. Um, I go to South City. I go to San Francisco. I, and I take art classes or, you know, whatever. Exercise classes or whatever. So I would like part of that to enhance our park and rec. And that's how you get community. That's Very what good. I think. Okay, can Ruben close it up and then we'll move on? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually going to echo that to include a reference to parks, um, open space. Um, and to go back on to Councilmember Lee's comment, uh, I agree that we should include an international, uh, Millbury as an international destination, but not necessarily at the expense of it being a re regional destination, um, to be able to combine both of those things. Because you know, a lot of people that live on the peninsula that we would that are not shopping in Millbury, they're not going into Millbury, but hopefully with these um, improvements that come along over the years, 
they will be coming into Millbrae. Thank you. I think I'm going to. No, yeah, no, totally. Um, <laughs> as, as far as mobility and transportation, um, if we could say something about bringing all aspects of transportation together, as that's the idea of a transit hub, that's what we are to explain further. I, we don't want to get into a lot of detail. This is big vision. But I know, so it, just along those lines, I think would get more in the direction. Okay. Okay, thank you. So let's move into the guiding principles, which delve um, one step deeper into um, some of these topics. So the guiding principles, these express the community's shared values and philosophies. They're broad statements of purpose and direction, and they provide further support to help achieve the vision. So if we look at the hierarchy, the vision is at the top. It's the ultimate goal of what we're trying to achieve through the general plan. And then the guiding principles are one step below that. Those guiding principles will guide the development of the goals, policies, and the programs, which are the specific um, deciding decision points and actions that help achieve the guiding principles and ultimately the vision. All of these, we do want to make sure that they're consistent, internally consistent, that we say something in the vision that there are policies um, and implementation programs to support that. Um, so there are, I'm gonna read through the guiding principles. I believe there are 10, maybe 11 here. Um, the first one is on El Camino Real, um, and a lot of this language comes from the Grand Boulevard Initiative. Uh, promote the revitalization of El Camino Real into a Grand Boulevard that creates a welcoming gateway into Millbrae. Uh, I'm going to just kind of read the, the highlight, the bold point of each one of these, but um, please read on for all the text here. Uh, for downtown, uh, cultivate a vibrant downtown in the station area. Transform the station area into a walkable mixed-use district, reinforcing its role as the most significant regional and local transit hub in the Bay Area. Under neighborhoods, neighborhoods preserve and enhance the neighborhoods. Provide a safe and complete transportation network that meets the needs of all users. Uh, enhance Millbrae's identity by creating vibrant places that bring community members together and draw visitors from the region. Nurture a sustainable urban environment. Provide all residents with excellent city services. Uh, promote a strong local economy. And promote a healthy community. And uh, we can delve a little bit deeper into all of the text in each one of these guiding principles, but in the interest of time, um, that's, the, that's the big picture on these. Um, so with that, the questions that we want to ask tonight are, do you feel that these principles are a useful guide to implement the vision? Um, and which are the most useful? And are there any ideas that are missing from this list? Uh, and why are those ideas important? So that we can flip back to anyone in particular if, if people would, would like that. We have um, park, two parks. They're at the north end of us. They have really lovely wide sidewalks. When I was a kid at Cappuccino, we walked them every day to get to everything. And I feel like we have ignored these. And the, the merchants there feel like we've ignored them. But they've already got the wide sidewalks. So, when, when I read everything, both in the big, thick plan, the existing situation, and this, we're talking about El Camino and downtown, they're way the heck down there, and they feel forgotten. So I feel that this continues the fact that we've kind of forgotten El Camino south of Office Depot, and we need to enhance what we can do for that end of our town. I'll go further on that, that there are stores down there selling e-cigarettes, right where all the kids are walking to both the elementary school and the high school. So we have some health issues around that end of town, and I would like to see them get some attention from us. Uh, as to the specifics here, we have the station area, and I think we need to expand that description to focus on enhancing transportation, the connectivity of all transportation providers. Uh, along the lines with mobility, I think that's extremely important uh, in that guiding principle, we need to promote interconnectivity, again, of all transit providers. And the economic development guiding principle, I think we need to significantly emphasize the best, highest use 
of our lands when we're talking about economic development because as was described earlier you're talking about a very minimal amount of land that we have to develop moving forward so if we're going to have a guiding principle moving forward here i think we need to clearly emphasize the best highest use of lands when we're talking about economic development so i have a question is 10 um guiding principles pretty normal for a city our size yeah 10 to 15 somewhere in that range we try to cover the a broad range of topics so there's some guidance on on each of the topics Sorry, a couple more. You, you on sustainability, you talk about water and energy, but you don't talk about recycling, zero waste. Under any of the transportations, I would love to see the city adopt. Let me get it the right name here. Uh, Vision Zero, meaning no act, no injuries of our people, whether they're walking or biking. Uh, a, a program out of Silicon Valley Biking Co Bicycle Coalition, Vision Zero. So I'd love to see a little bit more forward thinking. I know this might be a step before the policy, and I tend to jump straight into policy, but we need to have those concepts reflected in any of these things. There's no mention of green building. There's no mention of solar. We just approved a new nine unit condominium co uh, complex in the city, no solar. So we, we need to start getting that up there for any development. Joanne? Go ahead. So that it's, should, it's that that should be a healthy community or city services. Yeah. City services. Thanks. Vice Mayor. Uh, Rob, one second. Since she brought it up on number 10, I would say that promote a, a healthy and fit community is probably a better statement because health is related to food and health care. Fitness is related to recreational activities and biking, et cetera. So a more, if we're gonna, if we're gonna be at, get into the specifics here, if we're gonna fund programs for recreation, et cetera, then let's call it what it is, which is a, a promote a healthy and fit community. Vice Mayor. Uh, just a comment on a couple of the items, El Camino Real and mobility. Um, first of all, I'm glad that you mentioned that you have been looking into the Grand Boulevard initiative. Um, I'd like to encourage further coordination with them in terms of um, El Camino Real. Um, if we're going to be putting in bike lanes, for example, or changing the, the bus routes um, that we think regionally and plan regionally, uh, it doesn't do us a whole lot of good if we're putting in a bike lane through Millbrae and it stops at our borders. Um, so to be able to connect with our, our neighbors, I think, is uh, very important to have a cohesive network. Councilmember Lee. Um, on, same, on the same um, line of discussion, uh, CCAG is going to have a, a discussion soon about uh, um, grants from uh, MTC, which is Metro Transportation Commission, um, about uh, a point system, and part of that point system is inclusionary housing and all these other uh, um, scoring that uh, cities can all, apply, when they apply for these grants, if they provide certain elements, then they get more higher priority in the grants. So um, our representative here will hopefully, you know, she will represent as well. Um, in terms of mobility, um, I'd like to add something about making sure traffic flows well. Uh, because that's also a bane, and we don't want to be all stuck in sitting in five or ten minutes at the uh, intersection of Rollins and Millbrae, or El Camino and Millbrae Avenue. To pick up where Donna had mentioned too here, when we talk about interconnectivity of transportation, 
the connection to SFO is a huge aspect of that. Presently, BART is the one that controls how many trains go back and forth. We are directly linked to SFO, so we would like to promote interconnectivity between SFO, Caltrain, BART, the corporate shuttles, um, potentially high-speed rail, everything in the future focusing on a reduction of traffic as well. So that is the key point here, and it's something that's going to be discussed actually this Thursday, the San Mateo County Transportation Plan 2040 is going to be presented, and it's something we're going to emphasize is all the transit stations throughout San Mateo County need a little more focus on transportation. We talk about transit-oriented development, but we're losing the focus on transportation and making that work first and foremost. Up. I'm just Neet Sharma. I'm with the San Mateo County Health System with your local health department. Um, so I just wanted to kind of add a few points in there. It's great to see a call out on healthy communities. And what I really found compelling was how you have captured healthy communities from a standpoint of that it takes everything and not just a focus on physical fitness to be healthy, how access to housing childcare, uh, living wages, all these aspects are really important for health. And we can certainly share a lot of research and data with you on why these aspects are important. Uh, I think what I found, what I want to point out is that while you have a principle which says healthy community, you have no data in the existing conditions about a healthy community aspect. So there's no mention on uh, phys physical activity levels, asthma, diabetes, obesity, and uh, levels of uh, smoking, so any of those aspects that you would look at from a healthy community standpoint, I didn't see any of the data out there. And we would certainly be happy to share that information with you. We've got all the data on hand. Um, and also I think, uh, I do want to point out that, uh, I think what the gentleman here had said about looking at different aspects from a race perspective, it's really important because research has shown that health outcomes depend on race and income. So not everyone's health outcome is same. It depends on what income category you belong to and what race you belong to. So I would really encourage the city to look at it from that standpoint as well is what areas in the city are lower income? What are their health outcomes? How do they look different across different neighborhoods? So I would really encourage you to look at what we call uh, from a place-based aspect as well. And again, we have all that data on hand. And I'll certainly um, have a list of data points that I, I'll meet up with Michael and share with him. Uh, but just wanted to give some feedback. Interesting. That Very That's good. wonderful. Um, I, I do think, thank you very much. That would assist us in having a very diverse plan. We appreciate that. I do think we need to mention child care somewhere. It's a big part of uh, any community. There goes the community center again. <laughs> yeah, everything. Yeah. Uh, the back. community center touched so many spots that we are so realizing. I'd like to go back to traffic. And Mr. Rogers mentioned making pedestrian only from um, Hillcrest to La Cruz. I would suggest the opposite, Taylor to Hillcrest, because parking, driving that area is a nightmare. You have trucks. They're not delivery trucks. You have big pickup trucks sticking out, limousines sticking out. You cannot drive straight. You zigzag all the way through. And it's, it's either not the, what did he call it, herringbone, maybe um, uh, whatever that other way to park is. But I think if you have pedestrian only in that area, you might get even more, uh, more uh, people going to businesses if we could get a vibrant a community that has more than just restaurants. Um, I hope we can add something in there that in um, uh, talks about adding value to Millbury properties, um, whether that's by um, 
you know, strengthening our neighborhoods, I think we should include the, what the end goal of that is. And that's to make, you know, our communities a safer place to live or, you know, to, ease, you know, make transportation easier, to encourage people to work in Millbrae. I think there should be more uh, end goals in the actual uh, visions. This way we know where the vision is leading us because uh, I think, again, you know, we can't assume anything. It's important that if we were to hand this book to someone, let's say in another country, that they would understand what we're going for. And that involves putting things that more specific. I think number 10 was the most specific uh, and then number nine was the least specific. So I think, uh, you know, we should have the right amount of um, specificism um, in each thing so that we know where we're headed and a right amount of abstractism in things so that we know what the direction is. But we need, still need to know what the um, individual goals are. Any other comments on the guiding principles? Yes. Hello, my name is Corbin Jones and I'm a relatively new resident to Millbrae. And uh, I just moved here from Long Beach and I lived in Long Beach for a year. Before that I was in Seattle. And some of the most successful policies that I have seen be implemented in those cities deals with dense mixed use transit oriented development. And with a focus on placemaking, there's a problem in the Bay Area. And looking for housing for me and my, and my spouse has been more than a headache. And I think that it's very clear that there is a lack of housing. And not a lot of cities have cranes up. You go to different cities around the nation and people are building, building, building. And I think you could possibly, what I see uh, other cities do is leverage um, sort of the potential for development, maximize highest and best use, I think you talked about that, but provide incentives in exchange for things that the community wants to developers, people that want to build, people that want to make space for new Millbrae, if you can create specific incentives around green building, around um, public art, and different things that you want to see in your community, and work that into the entitlements process, and make room for potentially make room for newcomers, you know, help, uh, you know, people, well, I mean, just help the, the, the future city of Millbrae. That? Right. Right. Yeah. I, right. I mean, uh, the, the, the notion of transit-oriented development is, is absolutely essential, and that's what I want to emphasize. A lot of things I talk about today, but Obra has a specific um, uh, compared to the image. What's Right, I have one other, thing. Any other comments? I do. I'm not sure if it's a guiding principle or if it's going to get toward implementation, but a lot of points have touched on it. Um, we're not an island. We're part of a region. We should work cooperatively and um, coordinated and leverage people and cities around us. And um, perhaps the visionary part of it would be be a leader regionally in efforts that because everything traffic is not just Millbrae's <laughs> problem. Traffic is a Bay Area wide problem. So we can't solve it by ourselves. We're going to need help. But if we can envision ourselves being a leader in that area, that would be fabulous. But we got to work with others as well. So. All right, we're good. Well, thank you all very much for the the comments on these. Um, we'll be listening and looking through all the comments that we heard tonight and making some proposed revisions to these. So, this will be this is a work in progress. Um, this is just a draft. They're not adopted. So um, we appreciate all of the comments, and we'll work on uh, making some refinements to these. And when do we anticipate another meeting? Well, our, the next major effort is going to be um, the planning and design charrette, which we're targeting for the fall sometime. We haven't picked a specific date at this point, but we're, we're honing in on that date, and we're getting our outreach strategy together to make sure that we really get the word out there about So that. all of these comments with the library, the schools, uh, the, what was it, the patch, we'll get all of those implemented for getting more people here. Yeah, so yes, we'll be working on all of that. So we appreciate that input as well, because we're, we're just now developing our outreach strategy for that big 
effort, the, the big meetings. And we do want to encourage anybody who could not be here tonight that you can still comment. Yeah, correct? absolutely. The best way to do that, please? We have an email address. Um, you can find it on the website, which is milbury2040.com. Um, we had a slide earlier with that email address. It's, it is um, generalplan at ci.milbury.ca.us. Um, so if, if you visit the website, milbury2040.com, there's, there's a connection to uh, that email address. Um, and you can also contact uh, staff, um, Michael on staff, or me as the consultant team. Um, we're always uh, happy to, to talk to you about this project. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank and you. thank everybody for taking the time out to care about the community. It's most appreciated. And please bring somebody for the next fall meeting. And if, in fact, you uh, see that, if you hear that it's coming up and we didn't touch a spot that we need to touch, keep that feedback coming out because nothing would drill the five of us more or the eight of us more to fill up the room. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, planning. Pretty good. See you later.